Hi, I'm Denise, creator of Music Play and Music Play Online, and I'm here today to do a quick overview of the learning modules for Lesson 25. That's for March Week 2. So I'm on the beta site, and you can still access the online learning modules from beta. If I want to start with pre-K, I go here, and here's March 25. But I'm going to move to beta because um, Classic, the older site, is going to be retired <clears throat> this year, and the beta will become Music Play Online, so it's time to uh, give it a try if you haven't tried it yet. So on beta, the learning modules are here. You'll see there's a new icon for learning modules. I can filter by grade, which makes it quick and easy to find what I'm looking for. So I'm looking at pre-K for March week two, lesson 25. It looks long, but there's lots of review, and you can review as time permits. You don't have to do everything that's in here. Um, here's our I can statements. I can sing and move to music. I can show how sounds go high and low. I can respond to music with movement. You can see we've got um, PDFs here. The lesson guide is done. A seven coloring page, B responders for Flight of the Bumblebee, and beat strips. The beat strips are for time for music. And there's eight beats on a strip. And what I do first is model with the children how to tap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the beats. And then eventually I give them each their own beat strip and they can tap. It's good for teaching them left to right sequencing. It's good for number recognition. And of course, for keeping a steady beat. Sing to Bobo. Bobo has his cute little St. Patrick's Day hat on. So they listen to the pattern. They echo. Create ways to move for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whatever movements the kids come up with, you do it and you sing the numbers. It's seven and three. Lots of counting in this lesson. Uh, copy the movements for bring it home, my baby. Bumblebee. So watch the kids demo to copy the movements and then you sing the song um, with the video and pretty little graphics for them. And then we do on my toe there was a bee at the end. Take that you bee and we clap and it's a fun little scale song and of course we want you to be able to I'm going to show you something. We show the body scale. On my toe, there now is touch your ankles. Me, Knees, thighs, tummy, my tummy, shoulders, my nose, head, my head and reach up first. And if you didn't notice, there was a bug in beta before where if you launched full screen, it shot up to the top of the uh, module. That has been fixed. Now when I come out of full screen, I'm right back where I started. So I've included these in supporting resources. They're little B responders. Did I bring it with me? Of course I didn't. Um, I've colored one and you use it for Flight of the Bumblebee to show how the music goes. Um, if you want to just have them do it with hands and pretend they have a B, you can certainly do that. And I'm going to all of that. So if we have a theme for this unit, it is bees and leprechauns is what it is. Re review, here is the beehive. Where are the bees? Hidden away where nobody sees. Watch and you'll see them come out of the hive. One, two, three, four, five. Bzzz. Great finger play for little ones. You can act that out as well if you are allowed to get kids close enough. You can put them under a parachute that becomes the beehive and then they dramatize it. That might be a next year plan. And then we do BB Bumblebee. We learned it last week, we're gonna review it. And last week we learned I Like Leprechauns, little echo song. So it's very easy for the kids to, to do. I'm going to. It's fun, it's easy because it's an end. Then we have the storybook of how to catch a leprechaun. I love this storybook and my kids do too. And um, 
what we do is after every two pages, we sing a little refrain. I like leprechauns on St. Patrick's Day. So it starts out the same as the song. And then we add a little ending to it. And then we review keeping a beat with Irish washerwoman and it goes faster. You can have a beat leader that shows different ways of keeping the beat or you can lead your students in keeping a beat. Review letter X, an ox and a fox and end the lesson with skin and marine. So that is pre-K lesson 25, March week two. Now I'm going to share with you the kindergarten lesson 25 for March week two. And if we have a theme for this one, it's bees plus dinosaurs and a little bit of leprechauns. And <clears throat> we list the concepts here. If there's more concepts than will fit in that box, they end up in extra details. That's all the concepts we have. Objectives, supporting resources. So if there's any PDFs that you might need for the lesson, they're here. And we have published a lesson guide for this lesson already. This is Body Percussion with Welcome to School. These are new videos. They are lovely videos. So stop, stop, stop. If you feel that this is going too fast for your students, come over to this little gear wheel, click on speed and slow it down. That's three quarter speed. Stop, stop, stop. Escape out of that. And again, notice it doesn't pop up to the top of the module. That bug has been fixed. You end up right exactly where you were. Echo Bobo. I do this with pre-K, K and grade one. They all love Bobo. And kindergartens learn the song. Bernie B, Bernie B, tell me when your wedding be. Will it be tomorrow day? Take your wings and fly away. Zzzz. So in pre-COVID days, we would have um, chosen a bee who would have flown away, um, but you can adapt. So you can sing and point to the kids in your class if you're on a virtual lesson, or if you're in person and you have a flashlight, use a flashlight to point to the kids or a laser pointer if you're allowed to use those. And then the last one would do the bzzz. It's good vocalies for kids. Here is a pointing page from the Music Play Kindergarten program where they would tap on the beats as they sing. Bernie B, Bernie B, tell me when your wedding be. Pointing pages are really good manipulatives because they teach the kids to track from left to right. They keep them to maintain a steady beat. And this is a precursor to reading notation because they're following and they're tracking how the beats, or in this case, the bees are going. We can create a bug composition. We have an interactive that you can model. Bumblebee, bumblebee, let's do a spider, ant, and then you decide how to play it. I might play bumblebee scraping my sticks, bumblebee, bumblebee, spider, ant and you create that as a B section, and you sing Bernie B as your A section. Bernie B, Bernie B, tell me when your wedding be. So I use those for composition. And as an optional activity, give your children each a composition worksheet. If you're teaching virtually, I never assume that kids at home have printers. So this is probably better if you're in person, but the kids get to cut out the bugs and then choose eight to create a rhythm pattern. And then they choose what instruments to play the rhythm. Try it out. Do you like it? If not, change instruments. This is creative process. We're imagining, we're creating, we refine, and then finally we perform. This is the national standards in action right here for creating. We learn to sing and move to Leprechaun March, and it's march along like Leprechaun, singing such. Am I right? I might not be right. March along like Leprechaun. I 
was right. And now stand in place and do some kind of a little jig or march to the beat. And there'll be lots of different movements in this. That was me playing the flute in that recording. I remember doing that. I play flute for weddings and funerals these days and occasionally for pieces. Um, we have a body percussion play along to Connaughtman's Rambles. This is a beautiful Irish uh, fiddle piece. And uh, just like the beginning piece, nice steady beat. And we're going to do body percussion to it. Clap, 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 stop, stop. If you are loving these rhythm play-alongs as much as I am, you can go into rhythm practice, select whatever rhythm you're working on with your students and find the read, clap and play. And you will find a lot more of these every level. We've done 24 levels of rhythm. So these will work great from your Ks up to your eighth graders. Play instruments to the beat with Connaughtman's Rambles. That's another option for the same piece. We can review as Time permits, dinosaurs lived long ago. Stop, stop, grr, stop, grr. And then the dinosaur diddy wah, where I get to uh, show some fun little dance movements and end our kindergarten class with skinnamarinky dinky dink, skinnamarinky do. So a fun lesson. It's got some St. Patrick's Day in it, but not all. If you have children who don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day, it's good to have some alternatives in there for them. So that is the kindergarten lesson 25 for March week two. Now I'm going to look at grade one lesson 25 for March week two. You can see Bobo makes a return. It, this is such a fun activity. Kids don't care if they're kindergarten or pre-K or grade one or grade two or grade three. They just love Bobo. Our objectives are here. And I have started on Carnival of the Animals and will continue with one of the movements a week until we reach to the end of it. And then we'll be building it out in a unit. And we're gonna call that listening units. We're gonna put Peter and the wolf in there that we did in January of grade one and Carnival of the Animals will go there as well. So um, perform rhythms to welcome to music. I think these are not body percussion. I think these are actual rhythms. And I will echo because they haven't learned half of Kids welcome go. to music. Kids go. And again, if it's too fast for your kids, you go to the gear wheel and you can slow it down. And here's our Bobo Echoes. I like that little hat that we found for him. Um, Melody the Elephant's gonna come back for two weeks and then we're gonna have the uh, Easter Bobo coming back. Learn to play BB Bumblebee. Bee, bee, bumblebee, stung a man upon his knee, stung a pig upon his snout. I declare that you are out. And you can see how I played that with the students pre-COVID, but you're gonna to have to adapt for whatever your situation is. If you're virtual, you use this adaption. If you're in person, um, I suggest using a flashlight to choose your students. You point to each one in turn and, and um, the one who's chosen at the end gets to be the bee and they get to yeah, there's a pre-COVID way and a post-COVID way to do everything. Um, we've got the bee responders in the um, supporting resources, and you can move them to the flight of the bumblebee, or you can just enjoy the video because the video is fun too. Learn about the composer. This is first grade, so we've extended it a little bit and learn about Rumsky korsakov Model how to create a bug composition. And so I could use caterpillar, caterpillar, mesquite, so ant, and then I would model how, how to do that with the class as a whole. And if they're doing well with it, we can give them the assignment and they can do it each on their own. They cut out those eight bugs, decide which, or they, if there's 10 bugs and they put eight of them in the squares. And then we use uh, bee, bee, bumblebee, stung a man upon his knee as our theme. And our B section would be their bug composition.
Uh, we have interactive activities on BB Bumblebee, and I'm suggesting activities six and seven. Every reading song and music play has these interactive activities. So I'm presuming that by this time of the year in grade one, you've probably done this a number of times already. I can quickly go through. This is simply to point the beat. This one is to develop inner hearing where we sing out loud the ones I've left white and in our heads, the ones that are grayed out. Clap the words, B, B, bumble, B. And I would do the whole song, of course, with kids. Switch between stepping the beat and clapping the rhythm. B, oh, sorry, I'm gonna step the beat. B, B, bumble, B, sung a man upon his knee. I call that the beat rhythm switch game. Often I'll do it with cards, but I've got a virtual version right here if I want to. Assess whether I'm playing beat or rhythm. If they think it's the beat, they tap on their heart. If they think it's the rhythm, they would tap the words. That was the beat, because it didn't change. That was rhythm. So this is an interactive version of it if you wish to do that. Is it one sound, two sounds, or no sound? With icons, B, B, Bumble, B. Now we go to notation. And if you haven't already taught them, one sound on a beat is ta, two sounds on a beat is tt. Here's where you can teach them. Create a rhythm pattern with, with bugs. This models the worksheets that, the worksheet that we have. And this is the option of creating a 4-beat ostinato instead of the other composition. Optional name solfa notes. Option two, pitch letter names. I do solfa with first grade, but some people do letter names and it's all good. So that would be the solfa notes. And here would be the pitch letter names. One advantage of teaching your first grade pitch letter names is that when they go to the barred instruments, they know what the barred instruments uh, notes relate to on the staff. I still prefer pit, uh, solfa because to me, solfa is like teaching children phonics when they're learning to read. They sound out the intervals and they learn to know that so me always sounds like that. Even if I start on a different pitch, so me, it'll be in the same interval. Now we introduce the cuckoo from Carnival of the Animals. This is a beautiful video. You get to hear the, see the cuckoo peeking out. There's one. And there's another. And it's fun to dramatize it again. Uh, to dramatize it, where half the class is cuckoos and they peek out from behind the tree and the other half is the trees. And because the selection is long enough, it's over two minutes, you can switch halfway through. So the trees become cuckoos and the cuckoos become trees. You're just probably going to have to distance while they do that activity. I made a new worksheet for cuckoo. The cuckoo sings high and then low. Bup, bup. And so they practice printing those words. Circle is the music fast or slow. It's slow, but they print both. What instruments play the piece? The clarinet and the piano. And they get to color those and practice printing. Now, when the cuckoo peeks out, he peeks out 21 times. This is numeracy. This is literacy. This is music. Start on number one and count the beats. Ba, ba, or count how many times you hear the cuckoo in the music. Two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one times is how many times you hear the cuckoo. I've counted it a few times. Um, if you have time, review the lion from the Carnival of the Animals and then dramatize. During the introduction, I sleep like a lion. And then when he awakes, I pretend to play the trumpet like um, the fanfare that we hear. And then in the theme, we prowl through the grass and on all the roars, we show with our arms how they roar. And there's a beautiful worksheet for this as well with the intro, the fanfare, the theme, the roars. It goes from quiet to loud, 
to quiet and they get to color a line. So this will make a lovely booklet for the kids if they do every one of the worksheets. Now we review Lucky Little Leprechaun. And again, we're going to adapt the game. This is one where they would do it with partners, but now we're going to do it solo because we're not touching. So march in place. And then on the B section, you do some kind of a little jig or a little sailor's hornpipe. And the music time is over. So that's the grade one lesson 25 for March week two. I hope you've enjoyed it. Now I'm going to share with you the grade two lesson 25 for March week two. So in this one, we're, there's our outline, <clears throat> our objectives. We have uh, a reproducible story, but for Lollipop, this was actually in last week's lesson, but if you didn't have time, you can do it this week. And there's a Leprechaun Wish worksheet here as well. So body percussion with Welcome to Music. Learn to sing and play St. Patrick's Day Jig. This is a fun little piece. and. Typically, I would have done this, again, as a choose your partner game, but because of COVID, we're going to adapt, march in place during the A section and during the B section, do a little jig. Or I think this is an even better idea. During the B section, choose a leader who creates a movement and the class copies, whatever that movement is. And the whole purpose of singing games is to give kids a reason to repeat a melody over and over and over. And if you choose one leader, to do your B section, they are all going to want to be the leader. So give them all turns and do the song over and over again. This is from the St. Patrick's Day unit that is found in the unit section of Music Play Online. Um, and I just pulled it out and put it in the module. So read the solfa of the pitch names. T, 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 Ta, Ta, T, T, Ta, Ta. And then read Do, Do, Re, Re, Mi, Mi, So, 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 me, do, so, 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 me, do, me, me, so, so, do, and sing the song. And then you have the kids create a B section with things that they'd wish for. I'd wish for an end to COVID. Or I'd wish for world peace. I'd wish for money. I'd wish for my grandma. So you can have the kids create their own wishes, rehearse their wishes to a steady beat so that they're used to keeping a steady beat. And then you can perform the song. You sing during the 80s. If you catch a leprechaun, what would you wish for? What would you wish for on St. Patrick's Day? I'd wish for world peace. I'd wish for an end to COVID. I'd wish for money. I'd wish for love. If you catch a leprechaun, what and there are several repetitions of it. Um, and I am loving that this stays where it's supposed to after I've closed out of the full screen. Here is the worksheet for leprechaun improvisation, and they can draw a picture of what they wished for. We've got Spring by Vivaldi in the lesson this week, and you get to do it with ribbons. But if you don't have rib ribbons, it will work equally well with scarves. Notice I'm doing big movements when the music is loud, smaller movements when it's quiet. But like I say, it works equally well with scarves. So you use what you have. And I always love to do this twice. Once copying Mrs. Gagne, once make up your own movements and see what the kids come up with. Um, make sure they're far enough away from each other that they don't hit each other with their scarves. That does happen. There's a little video to learn about Vivaldi. And if you played Cut the Cake, in the previous week, you can review it this week. And playing it as a challenge game has been lots of fun. You choose two kids to challenge each other and you sing the song and then you do the challenge. How fast, who, who, can, do the, who can finish the challenge first? And it's really good to get those kids off the screen, exercising, moving, because the kids that are virtual at home have been on the screen too much. Um, a review of it's raining, it's pouring. If you're in person, this is a lovely piece to do the ORF arrangement for. I am going to just digress. Go to the song list. 
it's raining. And here it is. And I can pull up the ORF arrangement. And this is a really pretty ORF arrangement. On the Soprano Xylophone, Soprano Metallophone, you choose any um, two tones. So you're creating tone clusters. So the bass plays C, 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 C. And the Soprano Xylophone and Metallophone play these tone clusters anywhere they wish. It is beautiful. It sounds really, really pretty. And then... You can use the song as your A section and a poem about rain as a B section. Dr. Foster went to Gloucester in a shower of rain. He stepped in a puddle right up to his muddle and never went there again. And then you'd sing, it's raining, it's pouring, along with your ORF arrangements. And then you could say, rain, rain, go away, come again another day. And then your A section, it's raining, it's pouring. So it's in the module for grade two, lesson 25. But if you want to extend anything that's in these modules, there are lots and lots of extensions on, uh, on this website, on Music Play Online. Um, this is a good reading song for rhythms. It has a pickup note, which is gonna be something new for your students. But uh, these seem so simple, but there's so many extensions that you can do with them. Lollipop Tree was introduced last week. This is a beautiful performance piece, and there is a performance demo video of it in the song list. I showed it last week. And um, another option, if your kids are in person and singing long periods of time is not allowed, have them illustrate a little book to the story while you play the video. And then they can take that little book home, and they've got a little book that they've created of the song. I'll be doing more of these little books because we've got more and more schools going back to in-person and we're all going to be restricted as to the amount of singing we can do. So that's grade two, lesson 25 for March week two, and I hope you enjoyed it. Now I'm going to grade three, lesson 25 for Mark, March week two. <clears throat> And in this one, we're going to do Turkish March again. We're going to do Irish Reel and create some movements. We're going to play along with some half notes and we're going to learn Old Blue. So the play along uses half notes to prepare the students for Old Blue. This is quite a lovely one. I look at these beach scenes. It makes me want to go to Mexico. Two, ready, go. And I will take a minute at the end of this lesson to show you where all these new rhythm play alongs are. There's over a hundred of them on the Music Play online website. And they each, everyone has a new design. Everyone has different music. They are beautiful. And they're sequenced. You can get lots of these on YouTube, but it's random. It's a piece here and a piece there, and they all use Ta T T Rest. With Music Play, we've sequenced and we're teaching new rhythms in every video. Echo Do Re Mi Sol La. And this again is another new video on the site. In fact, we don't even have them in the solfa section yet. La so so mi re mi and you do. echo. La so so mi re mi do. Listen. Do la so la mi re do. Echo. Do la so la mi re do. And I'll stop. There's about eight patterns in each video. Now, they've just practiced do, re, mi, so, and they've just practiced half notes. So now have them read the rhythms, read the solfa notes of the song. Have them read the words and ask the students to think what the song is going to be about. Make it, uh, can't make that one bigger, but it's pretty good size on beta. And then we can sing the whole song, Old Blue. And this is quite an emotional song for kids, especially if they've ever lost a pet. And it is a really good song for getting um, kids to talk about how the music makes them feel and what in the music made them feel that way. So that's a 
that's a really good lesson for that. Um, option, name the sulfa notes, name the pitch letter names. And then we name the pitch letter names, and that is old blue, which is good. So A, A. So whatever you teach is available here. Option one, solfa, option two, pitch letter names. How many sounds? We send them to the interactive. I had a dog and his. And it, the blue, good dog two is going to be the half note that covers two squares. I can go back. I can go forward on that, but this takes them directly to the how many sounds. I've given them a worksheet to write in the sounds. You could use this as a summative assessment to see how well the kids are reading the rhythms. Move to the Irish reel. I have to say I had fun doing this. It was hard work. I was huffing and puffing. Heel out, heel out, toe behind. Other foot, heel. This is not meant to be Irish dancing. This is movement to the music. Kick, 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 turn around. 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 March two, three, four, back two, three, four. This is in the St. Patrick's Day unit, but it's done as a partner dance, and we did a swing instead of the marching. But this year, everybody's going to have to be solo. So I made a new video with the marching instead of the swing. Move with ribbons or scarves to Turkish march. I'm going to stay in the screen so you can see a scarf works just as well as a ribbon. We did start a Turkish march last week and did a rhythm uh, rhythm play along with it. And now we are moving with scarves to it. We started Song of the Frog last week and it's a round. So I, I always want to do rounds more than one week. In fact, I often will do them two, three, four weeks so that they can get the singing of the round successfully. So Zoom, if you're Zoom and virtual, try this around. I would suggest teachers sing part one get the kids to sing part two. You can't hear if they're doing it right or not, but you can try. And in person, if there's no singing, I've linked you to the virtual xylophone and you can try playing it on the virtual xylophone. You'll have to split your screen so that you have the music on one screen and the virtual instrument on the other. And I can play the virtual instrument with keys. Might be a little too hard for your kids, but you could certainly model it for them if you can't sing. Playing in the House was our instrument family song. So we have woods, metals, shakes, and scrapes, and drums. Divide the class into four groups, give each group one set, and then they get to improvise in the B, C, D, E sections. And it's a good review of instrument families for them. Um, this song replaces Dinah because Dinah is no longer considered appropriate for use in our elementary schools, but it teaches the same concepts. Do, re, mi, so, la, and it's got 16th notes. So a really good little reading song for grade threes. So that's our grade three lesson, March 20, uh, sorry, grade three, lesson 25, March week two. Here is a look at our grade four lesson lesson 25 for March week two. And I had some suggestions from some of the teachers in the Music Play Teachers group. And so I'm using their suggestions in this lesson. So we start with a rhythm play along that uses 16ths and eighths. And again, I love these beach scenes. Just makes me wanna to go to Mexico. Two, ready, go.
I'd like to be in Mexico right now. Um, Scotland's burning was introduced last week. So this is a review. And again, it's a round. It's a movement round. Kids have been, I've had really good success with this round in my choirs. And then we go to the poem, Deedle Deedle Dumpling. My son John went to bed with his trousers on. One shoe off and one shoe on. Deedle Deedle Dumpling, my son John. So take off the shoe that's on your left foot and then step the beat as you say the poem. Deedle Deedle Dumpling, my son John went to bed with his trousers on. And we go on to say some beats feel stronger than others. If you started on the, the, the first beat with your shoe, it sounds louder and it feels stronger. And we talk about how that's called an accented beat. And then we tell the kids that a bar line comes before an accented beat, dividing music into measures. In this poem, there are two beats in each measure. So it's two, four time signature or two, four meter. And then we want the kids to figure out the rhythm of the poem. And I've included a worksheet in supporting resources that they can do this as a written one. This is not interactive. So you're just gonna have to work with the kids on this. Deedle deedle would be ticka ticka. Dumpling would be teet tee. Now I've given body percussion for the poem, and I think this is actually quite fun. So on deedle deedle, deedle deedle dumpling, we pat my son John, we clap. Went to bed with his trousers on. So went is a stomp and the rest is pat. Went to bed with his trousers on. Then we snap. One shoe off and one shoe on. Deedle deedle dumpling, my son John. Try it. If you like it, keep it. I like it. But if you don't, change it or create your own. And then we want the kids to create an ostinato and divide the kids into two groups. One group does the ostinato. One group does the poem with body percussion. So the ostinato might be John had one shoe off. John had one shoe off. Deedle deedle dumpling, my son John went to bed with his trousers on. One shoe off and one shoe on. Deedle deedle dumpling, my son John. That's harder than it looks to do an ostinato while you say the poem. Divide your kids into two groups. It'll be easier to have one group to each. Uh, choose body percussion or non-pitched instruments and you perform. I can do it really fast in this demo. It takes a lot longer with the kids. Uh, this is the worksheet. They write it in, and then I want them creating an ostinato. So that is a picture of the worksheet. Here's the Irish reel for grade fours. Um, learn recorder melodies. And if you've been following this progression, they will be up to uh, melodies 22, 23, 24, 25 would be their review. Okay, I've got this wrong, I have to fix this. I'll get that fixed. Um, so their new songs will be 26, 27, 28, 29, and 29 is Ode to Joy. So this is the tool where you don't have to split the screen. It's all on one, I can make it full screen. And I'm going to find my B on the keyboard, which is the number seven. Kids love this song. So they're going to learn how to play Ode to Joy on their virtual keyboard. And then we're going to uh, go to a link and we're going to watch a flash mob performing Ode to Joy. It's really quite beautiful. I've been to Nuremberg. It's a gorgeous city. I had no idea it was such a beautiful city. And I don't know if I can speed it up. There we go. So a beautiful example of Ode to Joy on instruments. The flash mob is quite entertaining for your kids. Uh, then we are going to learn about Beethoven and optional complete a listening log while they listen to it. Wonderful lesson for grade fours. I'm sure your students will enjoy it. Do all 
do part, whatever works out best for the time frame that you have. Here is our grade five lessons for week two of March. I have given two options. Option one is a St. Patrick's Day lesson. Option two is history of jazz. So if you wanna take a week off the history of jazz and do St. Patrick's Day, absolutely. So we're going to do the same deedle deedle dumpling activities we did with fourth grade, move to the Irish reel, and then listen to Hi Ho the Ratlin Bog and compare two performances. So we've already seen this with grade four. If you've been watching the whole thing, there's a play along with tea tickers to get kids ready for deedle deedle dumpling. Um, I've added some uh, St. Patrick's Day rhythm flashcards here. You can choose the level, whatever level you want, and they can clap the flashcards, and if they get to the end of this, this is from the St. Patrick's Day unit. If they clap them all successfully, they get a nice little pattern. And then Rhythm Erase is also from the St. Patrick's Day unit. In this one, you choose your level again. I just want to TT rest. I can. And there's four patterns. You say all four, and then you make one disappear. Say all four, another all four, another disappears. All four, another disappears. Now they have to remember all four. If I reset, they all come back. So that's in the St. Patrick's Day unit. Deedle, deedle, they say the poem. You step it with one shoe on and one shoe off, and they feel the strong beats if they start on the foot with the shoe. Figure out that the strong beats are called accented beats. A bar line comes before an accented beat. And we label that as two, four time because there's two beats in each group. Then we figure out the notation for the song. This is body percussion for the song. Deedle, deedle, dumpling, my son John went to bed with his trousers on. One shoe off and one shoe on. Deedle, deedle, dumpling, my son John. So teach body percussion. Try out what I've written. If you like it, use it. If you don't, try something different. Create your own. And then we get the kids to think up an ostinato. Deedle, 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 dumpling John. I'm going to do it on my desk. Deedle, 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 dumpling John. I'm going to try saying the poem and the ostinato at the same time. Deedle, deedle, dumpling, my son John went to bed with his trousers on. One shoe off and one shoe on. Deedle, deedle, dumpling. My son, John. That is hard. It's not all that easy. Choose body percussion, non-pitched, found sounds. Have one group in your class play the ostinato. The other does the poem. And decide how you want to create a performance out of it. You could say it, body percussion, instruments, and then put it all together. There's a worksheet given in supporting resources on Deedle Deedle. Move to the Irish reel, and this is done so it's solo movement, no partners required. And then we're going to compare two performances. And these are the things I want the kids to think about while they're listening to these performances. Think about the elements of music. And think about um, an, an, a, a critical analysis of the performance. And then there's a worksheet that they will fill out. So the first performance is Drops of Green playing Ratlin Bog. I love this performance. It is so fun. And if I go to the end, it has gotten a lot faster. So an interesting performance for them to listen to. Now, this next performance is equally good, but in a completely different style. And I love it as well. It shows great movements. So, 
beautiful singing, beautiful performance, and really fun movements. And the kids can um, answer the worksheet questions after watching those two performances. And then we have a music play performance of it, which seems really feeble after those first two, but at least the kids have something that they can sing along and they can use some of the movements to go with Hi Ho the Rattlin' Bog. So that is option one for grade five and for middle school, lesson 25, March week two. I'm going now to option two for grade five and middle school, lesson 25. So option two is to finish the history of jazz unit. So in the history of jazz unit, we've been working on five, four meters. So I'll play along in five, four. We learned the Scooby-Doo song, do, 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 do. It's a fun song. I love it a lot. And uh, we learned 5-4 groove and did some improvising with it. Now we're going to do the last lesson in the history of jazz unit, which is on soul, bossa nova, fusion, and smooth jazz. And they do the answers to the top part. We're going to go to this listening example via a safe share link and they'll answer those questions. So here's the safe share link to Mr. Magic. And then we're going to introduce a project. Uh, one of the teachers on the Music Play Teachers Group on Facebook asked for a project to end the unit. So I developed this. It was not done over a long period of time. So if you want, uh, if you have suggestions for me, send me an email, please, and I will be happy to make changes. But the activity is to choose an artist to study. A list of artists is given below. Consider choosing a female artist because we have not had a lot in the jazz unit on female jazz artists and Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, Diana Krall, all these women are so important to the development of jazz. Research and compile information about your artist, including why your artist was important. Make a list of all the sources you use. I think the sources is really important because otherwise our kids are going to go to Wikipedia and just copy. Um, create a slide of your resources and URLs at the end of your presentation. Include one song. The teacher will review and download it. You need to review these songs. Make sure they're appropriate for school use. Uh, create a PowerPoint about your artist. Include information about your artist's life, musical influences, music and achievements. Include photos and graphics and include the source. And then present your, your uh, project to the class. And here is a rubric that you can use if you so choose. So this could be a nice culminating project for the history of jazz unit. And I was really tempted to use all female artists, uh, but there, I, I think it's good to give students choices and uh, we've given them lots of choices in here. So that's option two, lesson 25, grade five and for middle school. I'm Denise Gagne, I'm the creator of Music Play and thank you for being with me here today.